Welcome to the Shutdown Stories, Episode 7. I am here with Manchester City Women's FC forward and Canadian Women's National Soccer Team forward, Janine Becky. Janine, thanks for coming on. Of course, thanks for having me. So this wasn't the, uh, the plan for the timing of this interview, but you just signed a contract extension with Man City yesterday. What, what was that like? How was that feeling? Yeah, um, yeah, good timing. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Obviously, it's a bit of good news in a time where it seems like we're struggling to find a lot of good news. So, um, yeah, definitely excited and um, just really looking forward to the next two years. So you guys were on a run in the club season and then obviously in a bit of a break to prepare for the Olympics that were supposed to be happening in just a couple months. But instead, you're now on this kind of indefinite break. Uh, where yeah. were you the day that you found out that everything was getting shut down? What were you doing? What was that day like? So, yeah, we were in the last, I would say, third of our season. Um, in Manchester, we had just come off an international break. So I was away with the national team in France, actually. And I had just gotten back to Manchester and it just, it just all happened so fast. Like we were gone for the international break for 10 days. And prior to that 10 days, there was really just news starting to come out about the virus in China and what was happening. And there wasn't any kind of concern that it was going to affect the rest of the world so we went away to this camp we were there for 10 days and as we were there kind of more news started to come out and we were being briefed on travel because obviously everyone for the most part except for a few of us were traveling back to the U.S. Um, at that time and then I went back to England and was in England for like three days and then we went in to have um, just a normal training session and they were like look we have to shut down the facility for like the next two weeks at least. So you guys will be at home. And this was before the government had shut anything down. So everything was normal other than the fact that games were being postponed and the training facility was closing. So I was under the impression that I was going to be staying in England. And then as the course of the week went on, um, my general manager's assistant called me and said, look, we want to get you home before this gets really bad so that you can be somewhere where you're comfortable. So I was really appreciative of that. So then like literally three days later, I flew back to Colorado and I've been here for, uh, it'll be a month tomorrow. Wow. That's insane. So Man City, you guys were on a bit of a win streak leading up to that international break, uh, top of the table in the uh, Super League and then uh, five game in a row that you guys, had gotten victories with. Does that make it harder to kind of take a step back and know that the season's on hold? Yeah, it was a little bit of weird timing just because we had gone away on the international break. So everyone's focus had shifted to the national team. And then um, some of our team wasn't even back from the international break yet when, when this all happened. So um, I think it's just been kind of a constant, obviously it's just kind of a waiting game for everyone. and. <clears throat> I think it'd be a little bit easier to um, sort feelings if there was decisions made around whether the season's going to finish, whether they're not going to finish the season. Um, but it's just a difficult spot to be in because obviously we have to keep training as if we're going to kind of jump right back into a season. Whereas like I have friends and teammates um, that play here in the U S and they just started their preseason for their season, kind of like the MLS. So they're all preparing to go into a preseason, whereas I'm preparing to potentially go right back into the middle of the season. So it's just, yeah, it's a super weird time. But I also think it's, it's kind of um, mind-blowing because it's not like this is just affecting, let's say, for example, like a group of athletes. Like this is not just causing issues for us in our career. It's literally like all of humankind. And I think that that's super super humbling in a way because it's like okay it takes this worldwide virus to kind of shut the world down which is just weird so when I start to get frustrated about it I just remember like look everyone's being affected by this and the top priority is safety and, and in that concern I think that everyone's made the right decisions when it comes to you know postponing seasons and um, you know, postponing the Olympics. So it's been a super strange time. Um, 
in so many aspects, but to leave England in the middle of my season with kind of no real idea of when I'm going to go back is it's really strange. So you also have a pretty unique perspective because of the virus kind of hitting Europe first and at least the eastern side of the Atlantic first. Uh, what was that like having international teammates and just hearing the stories come out from all over the place and dealing with that? Yeah, I think um, I have a German teammate on my city team who was in uh, Germany actually for the international break with, with the German national team and she didn't come back to England yet. So she had just stayed in Germany and she was one of the first that we had heard from that ended up being on a lockdown. So it was kind of like the first I had heard about this lockdown situation and she was just like, yeah, everything's closed. Everyone's staying home. No one's working. And I was like, wow, that is so bizarre. I can't imagine what that's like. Mm -hmm. And then I left England and about a week later, they went into a lockdown. And so I was like, oh, it's just a matter of time before, you know, I'm here in Colorado and, and we're on on the same thing. And it was, it was about maybe a little over a week after that, that um, the governor of Colorado ordered a stay at home order for the state. So I've been in lockdown for about three and a half weeks now. <laughs> Have any of your coaches either from Team Canada or with City given you any programs? What are they telling you as far as like, hey, this is what we want you to be doing. This is what we're expecting. Yeah, I think um, both my strength and conditioning coaches and performance coaches from both teams have been incredibly diligent in the situation um, to, you know, meet with the rest of the staff. And it's, like I said, it's just an odd situation because they are giving us a program to, for me, to prepare to go back into a season. And that looks very different than some of my other teammates, national team-wise. City, obviously, we're all on the same program, but it's also based on what you personally have access to. So some people only have access to a stationary bike, some people a treadmill, some people not any of that's just you have access to being outside for a certain time of day. Um, some of my teammates have like barbells and weights. I don't, I have hand weights and dumbbells and things like that. So um, I've been incredibly impressed by the performance staff from both my teams um, that have been working so hard to make sure that we're getting the, the help that we need. Um, to try and maintain or build in some aspect of our performance over this time. Um, and I think that I, I hope that people are taking advantage of this time, whether it's that they need a little bit more rest or that they kind of ramp up, which is what I'm doing um, and trying to, you know, be at the altitude and get fitter um, while still trying to maintain and potentially build strength. So it's definitely a challenge. Um, and for some people, that could be really difficult and it's very difficult to find motivation in this time, I think. Um, but I figure, you know, I have uh, however long in a day and I'm, you know, pretty lucky that I don't have all that much else to do so I can really focus on my workouts and, and getting better. And I've actually been quite surprised with my mindset and my, um, that I haven't totally gone crazy yet. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's definitely been hard, but, um, the programs have definitely helped try to stay on a routine. Where's your head at knowing that with Team Canada, you guys have already qualified for the Tokyo Olympics, but now knowing that you have an extra year plus to prepare and keep working towards what's the, obviously the ultimate goal of the gold medal? Yeah, I think it's, um, it's a very different question when you ask different groups of people because on a national team, obviously we have – you know, some athletes that are 17 years old and some that are 35 years old and we're preparing to retire after this Olympics. So when you, when you ask those people, you know, what is it like having another year? I would assume that it's very frustrating. We haven't really had that conversation yet. We've kind of been trying to let the emotions subside before, you know, we have those kind of conversations. But for someone like me, who's literally smack dab in the middle of the age range um, on our team, it's it's frustrating because you you know since the world cup ended last summer um obviously that world cup ended in in disappointment for us so you try to so quickly shift your mind to the next world event and for us that was supposed to be this summer so you know you spend months physically preparing and more so mentally preparing further out um to go towards this preparation for 
in Olympics and this was going to be my second Olympics to prepare for. So I had, you know, that experience this time around. And then I think part of me kind of expected there to be some disruption of the preparation or a slight postponement, maybe like like a month, two months. Um, And then as it got closer to the announcement being made, I think I kind of made it up in my mind that it was going to be postponed. So that was when the news came out that Team Canada wasn't going to send athletes, Mm -hmm. which they were one of the first countries to say, look, if this is happening, we're not going. Um, It was like a very bittersweet feeling because I was very proud that the Olympic Committee had stood up and made that decision to keep everyone safe. I thought that was an incredibly smart decision. But at the same time, just an incredible amount of disappointment knowing that the games could go on without us. And that was probably the hardest pill to swallow. But I think we also knew it was going to put incredible pressure on the Olympic Committee to make some kind of decision. And thankfully, I think that they got a lot of pressure from a lot of big countries that have would have had a large number of athletes traveling. So for me, I'm looking forward to another year to get better, um, to have more experience. Um, the hard part is, you know, physical preparation for an Olympics is, you know, one of the toughest things that you'll ever do. Um, we encounter some of our hardest conditioning workouts, really intense strength programs, and all in the midst of trying to play a season. So it's it's hard to think about right now a whole other year to wait. Um, but at the end of the day, I 100% agree with the decision and look forward to preparing for another year. Yeah, I can only imagine what it was like hearing your country come out and say, like, hey, if this is happening, we're not sending our athletes. Like, we're not going to risk it. Uh, did you know about that decision before uh, the news came out about it? Did the Olympic Committee communicate to all the teams pretty well? Yeah, so we got pretty frequent emails from the um, person in charge of communication from Team Canada, uh, which was great. Um, and then we got an email from our head coach and an email from the Olympic committee before the news broke. So they made sure that everyone knew exactly why the decision was made, that we wanted to have a, um, a team based front going at it, that everyone was on board. Um, and they had a group of leaders from team Canada. So athletes from a bunch of different sports they had been communicating with quite frequently and. Um, getting opinions from and making sure that this was something that the athletes agreed with. Um, They didn't just make the decision without speaking to anyone, which I thought was really great. Um, And then, yeah, it ended up being an incredibly positive response, even from the rest of the world. Uh, And then obviously, you know, it did what we were hoping it would do, which was, you know, convince the Olympic Committee to postpone. No, well, that's good. You always love to hear about those massive committees actually taking into account their athletes, communicating with them, making sure that they know all the facts. Um, Are you doing anything different now that you're in quarantine on lockdown? You know you're not going to be playing for a while. Are there any new hobbies that you're picking up? What does a pro athlete do when there's no sports? Oh my gosh, a world without sports, I think we've all learned is a very sad world. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, very much looking forward to being able to watch live sports again, whether that's empty stadiums or whatever it is, whatever we have to do. I just want sports to be back as soon as possible. But um, I haven't really picked up a whole lot of new hobbies. I've tried to stay on routine as much as possible, which is a little bit difficult, but I think it's definitely helped. Um, The weather has been really nice in Colorado, despite a few snowy days, so I definitely Mm -hmm. try and spend the majority of my day outside, um, however I can, obviously still considering the government guidelines, staying as far away from people as possible. Um, And I love to cook, so I loved to cook before the quarantine, but I've done a lot of cooking in quarantine and have learned some new things, which has been great. I baked my first loaf of bread the other day, and turned out really well, so I was happy with that. Um, and then, yeah, just trying some different kinds of workouts too. I think, um, it's really, really difficult to follow a program like dead on for a long period of time. So our performance coaches have been very lenient and say, you know what, like mix it up a little bit. So I've actually done some dance cardio, which I never would have thought that I would enjoy, but I really do enjoy. Um, And then I just think it's really cool as an athlete to see kind of the fitness community really come together and offer, you know, free classes for people. And I hope that the general public has really 
taking advantage of this time to take care of themselves and build some new health habits. So I've really enjoyed uh, following some people's uh, social media accounts that are more, you know, fitness, nutrition, health based people. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, I think I definitely wanted to read more than I am, but I'm such a bad reader that I haven't been able to, to keep up with, with that. <laughs> that well, goal, I'm, in, uh, but, I'm into um, the twenties on books read this year. So if you need any recommendations, let me know. Wow. All right. That's about all I got for you, Janine. I can't thank you enough for coming on the shutdown stories and giving me some of your day. I uh, hope you're able to stay safe and in shape and that we can see you out on the pitch here pretty soon. Yes, of course, you too. Thank you so much for having me. And yes, yeah, stay safe, stay sane. I feel like that's mm. going to start to be a new hashtag or something. Yeah, Don't seriously. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Janine, take care. Nice to talk to you.